economy. Praise the Lord. We serve a God who is victorious. Amen. We said our life is in him in the first song. And I'd like to t remind you that God is in control of the universe. God is in complete sovereign control of the universe. Amen. Just as Jesus, while he was on this earth as a human being, relied totally upon God. Even though he was God, he spent time with the Father found time to pray alone, we need to be totally relying upon God and not on our own abilities because it is easy to think in the modern world that we uh, can do things on our own. Things are easy for us, but if anything that pandemic has taught us is that we need to rely upon the Lord each and every moment, each and every moment of our life. Amen. Amen. We're studying from the book of James. So as you're going to chapter 4, we're going to finish off chapter 4 today. So please go with me to the book of James chapter 4. Today I'd like to speak a message that is titled Dio Valente, which is a Latin term that means our tomorrows are in the hands of the Lord. Dio Valente. Dio Valente. God willing. Uh, the Lord, if the Lord provides, if the Lord is willing... Our tomorrows are in the hands of the Lord. And for that, we will go to James chapter 4, verse 13 uh, through 17, the last portion. But as we're going there, let me uh, uh, bring a way of introduction. Uh, you guys have all heard about the Titanic, uh, especially in the last week, with a submarine that was trying to go find out what was happening uh, or finding out more. And we know that that exploded and a lot of people died. But the original Titanic, did you know that it was the biggest ship created at that time? And it set forth from England, Southampton, bound for New York on April 10th, 1912. And it was the largest, most luxurious liner that had ever sailed uh, at that time. It was thought to be unsinkable. And we see that the confidence was so high that the owners and the builders rejected uh, the, the plan to have a full amount of lifeboats. They said that it's unsinkable. Not even God himself could sink this ship is attributed to a lot of the crew members. And we know what happened on its maiden voyage. We, it hit an iceberg and we are familiar that there were 2,228 people on board and more than 1,500 of those people died in that accident including 75 children. And we see that there was maybe some arrogance there, right? It's the same way the Titan, uh, which last week exploded, they, the owner of that, maker of that boat said, safety is just pure waste. We see a, a amount of arrogance or pride in those verse. So let's see what James says in that context. James is warning us about self-confidence and warning us about boasting about tomorrow. You know, you may have a lot of money saved up in the bank. You may have a good 401k account or retirement. But God is saying through James that we should be warned about our self-confidence in our money, in our abilities, in our health, and in our wealth. But we should be trusting in the Lord. We should be careful not to boast about tomorrow. Amen? So let's go to James chapter 4. It says, come now, come now. You who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. We can see that this whole chapter we've been studying, uh, James is warning the folks, uh, the Christians, and this might have been specifically for the merchants that were traveling at that time, not staying put. Uh, but it is applicable to all of us here in America. We travel, we get on our cars, we take the train, or we take the plane and go to different places we do business. Come now, those who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a place, a town, and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, Dio Valente, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this and that. As it is, your boast is, is in your arrogance. As it is, your boast, 
You boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. It is sin. So if you study this portion, one of the words that comes up in different languages or different uh, versions is that word boasting, boastfulness. But the bottom line is, it is another word for the word pride or haughtiness, puffed up, lofty, self-exaltation, being conceited, being arrogant, and being boastful. As a pediatrician, I know for the young people that are sitting here, the teenagers, pay attention. I know that naturally you're inclined to think that you're invincible. Nothing bad could ever happen to you. That's just a normal phenomenon that you go through during adolescence. But I still want you to know that you should not boast. You should not have pride or haughtiness that through that time you need to have your reliance on the Lord. Amen. So this portion talks about the pride of man versus the providence of God. You know, in 1 John it talks about the, the, the flesh, the eye, and then it talks about the pride of life. This is very similar to that, the pride of man. A pride that says uh, that I don't need God. I can do this on my own, right? It's good to have success. And it needs to be that we need to give God careful glory for every success that we get. If you think your hand did it, if you think your brain did it, then you have the pride of man. Don't take credit for the works or the creation that he has done that belongs to the creator. Amen? Amen. And that's hard to understand sometimes when we're in our adolescence. Uh, I, I agree with that. But understand this. We need to give God the glory for all that he has done in our life. He knows the very hair on my head. He knows uh, the very days upon uh, which I ought to live. He knows every aspect. That's why I said he's a sovereign God. And he provides for his children day by day, minute by minute. And we might think we're just floating through life, that we are here in Oklahoma uh, for this time and such a place and time as this. But it is in the perfect will of God that you are here at this time and this place. As a personal testimony, I would never think that I'd be in Oklahoma at this time, right? Born in Kurikala or Pandalam. There was no way that uh, I, was, I would have been able to come uh, what, as a young boy to the Bronx. And then I would think I would stay in New York all my life. Uh, but God had his ways. And it's the Lord who leads us and takes our steps one by one. Amen. Amen. We know that sin is one of those uh, pride is one of those sins that God hates the most because in the celestial beings, the uh, Satan, uh, we know that the angels uh, that try to rebel against God because of their pride. And it's one of the sins that God hates the most. It's also one of the world's oldest sin. What did the serpent tell Eve? That you can be like God, right? Yes. And so we also see that in Cain. We see that the pride... Uh, uh, took a hold of him and he killed his brother, Abel, right? And we also see that in the Tower of Babel. People wanted to make a tower that reached up to heaven because of the pride that they had. They wanted, they wanted certain things and they wanted to be the God of their lives. So at this time, I'd like to ask you a question. Who has the control of your life do you think you have the control of your life or is God controlling each and every moment, each and every decision in your life? We see that pride is also a gateway kind of sin where it causes other sin, right? We see that it causes pride, it causes idolatry. Anything you put before God, whether it's your education, whether it is your family, whatever you put ahead of God, that becomes an idol, right? And so any time that you spend extra on those things, it becomes pride and idolatry. Also, pride leads us to compare to others, to see, you know, what do they have? What do I need to have that's better, right? So ultimately, it comes down to being self-idolatry. It becomes that you're the master of your own life. And that is what 
the freedom-loving uh, Americans, and, and uh, uh, that is the freedom we enjoy in this country also teaches us that, you know, you can do anything you want to, which is true. Uh, you, can, you can become anything you want to be. If you're born here, you can become the president and you can do anything you want to be. While that is true, we need to make sure that it is in the will of God. We need to make sure it's in the will of God. God, what do you have for my life? In Proverbs 16, 5, it says, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. It's an abomination to the Lord. In Proverbs 16, 18 through 19, it goes into, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit uh, before a fall, right? In Proverbs 8.13, the Lord says, I hate pride and arrogance. In Psalms 10 verse 4, uh, it says, in his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. And that is the problem. When we have self-pride and self-reliance and we are on the throne of our own life, we do not, we do not need to rely on God and we think that we can do it ourselves. It is boasting in oneself and not in the Lord. It is taking credit for ourselves when we should be giving credit to what God has done in our lives, right? It's robbing God of his glory, right? Our God is a jealous God and he wants our worship. He wants the glory that is due unto his name and we should not rob him or take credit for his glory. It's also relying on ourselves and not in God. And, you know, how, uh, you know, being born here and uh, being a child that's born here to uh, parents, it's easy to just uh, go by each day and uh, things are provided for you and uh, you don't need to necessarily uh, be suffering as much as you would in another country. And it's easy to rely on yourself and uh, your parents, let's say, but not on God. So it's not saying that it's wrong to rely on yourself or your parents. And, and James here is not saying that you should not plan for the future. And that's not the case. I know there's a lot of planners. In uh, December, you get your planner for the next year. Uh, and you plan out everything that will happen. But it's okay to plan. But it needs to be in the will of God. Dio Valente. If God willing, I will do this and this. Not that I will do this on my own power. Amen. Amen. Going back to that for a second, uh, this, the other points is that it's failure to admit that we are merely earthen vessels. Amen. Amen. It's unwillingness to admit that we are weak and that we are falling. One of the other portions in this uh, talks about how we are just a, a breath, right? We are just a mist, a cloud. And we'll get into that in a minute. But it is feeling sufficient in our own strength and not needing to rely on God. It's ultimately taking the glory away from God. Amen. So when we fail to do certain things, when we fail to pray, when we fail to give God the glory, we are saying that we are the Lord of our life. We might be giving him lip service by coming here on Sunday and lifting your hands to praise him. But if you're not praying and relying on the Lord daily, we're kind of saying that we're really a practical atheist, right? We're saying that, you know, uh, things just happen and I'm just here uh, because my parents made me come. But are we ultimately saying uh, that it is the Lord who provides for me and each and every moment, each and every hair on my head is numbered uh, by the Lord and that he is the one that sustains us. He is the sovereign Lord who is in control of my every moment. Amen. Let's go on to that next slide. In this portion, we see also about the brevity of life. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. You know, when the temperature gets cold and you breathe, what do you see? You see your own breath, a mist, right? Or if you see on certain mornings when there's fog, you see the mist. And then at noon, when the sun comes out, it's no longer there. We see that it is like a vapor that is there for maybe a few minutes or a few uh, hours. That is what our life is. In the Bible, it also goes on to say that our life is like a shadow. You know, and you might see it at certain times, but later uh, at noon, you don't see a shadow, right? Because the sun is directly over you. So it's shifting, right? It talks about grass that withers. It talks about flowers that fall. It talks or compares our life 
as sojourners or travelers or strangers in this world. We are tenants or pilgrims uh, headed towards New Jerusalem. We don't have a home with a foundation upon earth. If, as Pastor always says, if our foundation on, is on earth, uh, if the things of the world has caught a hold of us, then we are not headed in that direction, right? Pastor also, also recently spoke about hand breaths and that our life is like breaths, which is very similar to that vapor or mist. And the Bible also says that uh, 70 or if at most 80 and after, afterwards it's full of trouble, right? Amen. Amen. So we need to understand the brevity of life. And again, children, teenagers, I don't fault you, but when you are that age, you might not think about this, right? You don't have the aches and pains that us 40-year-olds feel. Amen? Or older folks. But there is coming a day when we are going to leave this earth. We will fly away, and we are just here temporarily, and that is something we need to keep in mind. Our, our home is in heaven forever and ever with the Lord, worshiping him forever and ever. So this is just a small component of that long thousands of years uh, that we will spend with the Lord forever and ever. And if we have that in mind, then we're willing to say, Dio Valente. Dio Valente, which means this will we do if God permits. This will we do if God permits. It shows that we understand that the absolute sovereignty of God is in control of the universe. You know, global warming or anything else might happen, but without God's knowledge, there is no such thing, and God is in control of everything that happens, and we don't need to worry as much. Amen? The uncertainty of human life uh, and opportunities is also another thing that we say when we say God willing or Dio Valente. We're saying that we are frail. We are uncertain uh, by our own abilities. When we stand, we cannot stand. And it is only on the Lord. And you're saying that my total dependence is upon God who will help me. And he is a divine one. And apart from the Lord, I can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The Lord said, I am the wine and you are the branches. You abide in me and I, I will abide in you and you can do much. Right? So just as Christ relied on the Father, we need to rely upon the Lord. We need to rely upon Christ each and every moment with the help of the Holy Spirit. Put your uncertain futures, and I don't know what you're facing today. It might be easy for me to say this, but you might be facing an uncertain future. The doctor might have given you a diagnosis. You might have many uh, bills in front of you, but put your uncertain future in the hand of a certain God and know that he is the one that holds our hand, amen. He is the one that holds our hand and he has promised us that even when you're old and gray, he will sustain you till the very end, amen. He is the faithful one and we can believe in his promise for sure. He is the only one that is faithful forever and ever. The one that is in the sovereign Lord of the universe is telling us that he will take us till the very end and take us into Beulah land with him, amen, amen. Verse 17, uh, the last portion of this chapter 4 goes on to talk about a sin of omission. A sin of omission. Now we're very familiar with sins of commission. Now sins can be um, studied and there's a whole Bible study on sins, let's say. There is sins that come un unknowingly, right? Sins that come knowingly. But here there's a separation of sins of commission and sins of omission. Commission would be to actively do something that is sinful. And we're very aware of that because uh, our, our consciousness might prick us and say, hey, you did something wrong or you did this or that. But there are also sins of omission that are just as important. So what does that verse say? In the New Living it says, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Right? What are those kinds of sins? So if you know of an opportunity to do the right thing today, but yet you refrain to do it, you are guilty of sin, it says in the Passion Translation. So as doers of the word, he is pointing out that there is an inherent contradiction or inconsistency if we do not do what we ought to do. Amen? 
If we don't live out what we're preaching, uh, we are becoming like practical atheists. We might say we have God, but we are not living as such. And those could be failing to love God. Thinking you can do it on your own, right? That's what this context is about. Failing to trust in God. And so saying that I will do this on my own power, my own abilities. Failing to honor God. Failing to give thanks to the Lord. And we'll get another opportunity here in a few minutes to worship the Lord. Give him the glory for he has given us a new day and his new mercies uh, for today. Failing to fear the Lord. To defend the faith. To study and believe the scriptures. To guard one's life and doctrine. And keeping your spiritual fervor and praying to the living God. If we're lacking in our prayer life, that is showing a sin of omission that James is pointing out is showing that we are trying to say that we are the God of our own lives and that we don't trust in the sovereign God. You know, the saying of the world is to be eat, drink, and be merry, right? Eat, drink, and be merry. You only live once, YOLO, right? Just do what feels right, bro, right? Or there's an older term that says, que sera, sera, which means whatever will be, will be. If you believe that life's events cannot be controlled, uh, that it's only by chance, uh, that is what determines your destiny. And that's why people say, you know, knock on wood, or people say good luck, or other things. But for a child of God, it is Dio Valente. If you submit yourself to the Lord, God is the one who sets the times and the seasons of our life. In the good times and the bad times, the Lord is one who sets our times and seasons. It is the God who decides my future for me. It is the living God, the sovereign one that will decide the, my future. And how I respond to God will, God's will is a response to how I grow in my faith and love for my Lord and abiding in Christ as we continually uh, say that, Lord, you are the master. So the prescription that I like to leave you with is to be subordinate to the Lord in all of your dreams. It might be good to have great dreams. It might be good to say, I will go to uh, this school or do this or that with my life. You might say, I'm going to become uh, X, Y, or Z. Uh, you might say that it is uh, my abilities, my knowledge, my brain that is able to do this. But no, be subordinate to God's dream for your life. Seek to see and remove all pride from your life. You know, pride comes in knowingly or unknowingly, many times in ways that you don't even realize, and seek, you have to seek it and see and try to remove it as best able. And then also seek if there's any sins of omission in my life that I can uh, get right with God about, all right? And we need to do this not only in our thought life, right? We need to do it in three aspects of our life. So I have a prescription for that as well. It says thoughts and desires, right? We need to have our thoughts and desires be set on the Lord. Set your minds on things above and hold every other thought captive to say, Lord, what do you have for me and my life? Then pass the thoughts into your words, then you speak the truth in love and build each other up. Be gracious and gentle in your speech. Then, then it goes to that next step that James, who is a, a preaching, being a doer of the word, is going into. To love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And so many more in the Bible, right? So not only in our thoughts and our desires, but in our words and our deeds, we need to show that we are in alignment with the Lord and that God is in control of our life. You know, if we showed this to the world, there would be a difference. And when we say, if the Lord wills, you know, I'm not asking you to say it as a, uh, a tradition or, or just as something that you do. But here, James is telling us that we need to have God and consider God and what does God have for me in every aspect of my life. As the worship team is coming up in my last minute, let me conclude. We may make five-year, ten-year plans for our life. And it is good to plan. It's good to be uh, being a prepper or, or planning 
Um, but we need to always be in the will of God and say, God, what do you have for me? And sometimes it may be an audible voice, but other times it is knowing that you're standing on the word of God and that you're not going left or right and that you're standing on what the Lord has promised. The Lord may close certain doors and you're not wondering, you're wondering why. You know, why is God not opening up a job for me at this place or that place? But the Lord has your future in mind. He has the 10-year, 15-year plan in mind. And it might seem like a loss at the time, but everything that we are is because of the Lord. So as the song goes, because he lives. And as we sang the first Malayalam song, our life is in him. Amen. God sent his son and they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave, there is proof that my Savior lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. I know who holds my future. And therefore, life is worth a living just because he lives. And then one day soon, we'll cross the river. And I'll fight life's final war with pain. Then as death gives away to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I will spend forever and ever with my Lord. Amen. Dio Valente, if God wills, he is the one that holds my future. He is the one that holds my future. Let it not just be a saying, God willing, but let us put it into practice each and every moment, knowing that that is the will of God for his children and he has complete control and he is a sovereign God. May God bless you all with these words.